Good morning to everyone. Thank you for uh, being here and attending the uh, CRIPQT Brussels conference. Uh, we have uh, a pretty much tight schedule, so we uh, I, proceed, I suggest I start uh, with the um, uh, presentation of the panel first. Uh, we have Marco Budimir, the project uh, coordinator from the uh, from Inetech. Uh, Aristides Arvanitis from CDEP, uh, public um, power company in Greece, and Alexados Antonatos, uh, also CDEP, uh, PPC um, power company. Um, we, uh, as we know, CRIP UT started some uh, several months ago. We uh, have the pleasure to have uh, the uh, instrument uh, that was tested uh, several times in several countries of the in Europe. Uh, w the revelation of the instrument will be held uh, this afternoon, but now, with other further ado, may I pass the floor to uh, Marco Budimir, the project coordinator, who will speak on, uh, will welcome, uh, welcome the um, uh, participants and present the uh, overall project Crip Beauty. Marco, you have the floor. Okay, good morning everybody. I will just uh, give a short introduction to the project. Uh, my name is Marko Budmir, I'm the co coordinator of the project. And uh, here are some short information which will be discussed more in detail during uh, this afternoon. Uh, these are some short information about the project. At a glance, uh, it's the FTI. It was an FTI pilot call from 2016, and uh, the full title of the project is uh, "Ultrasonic Non-Destructive Testing System for Detection and Qualification of Early Stage Subsurface Creep Damage in Thermal Power Generation Industry." Uh, the consortium started with five partners. Uh, Kaunas Technology Univer uh, University from uh, Kaunas from Lithuania, PPC from Greece, TWI LTD, Applied Inspection LTD, and uh, us, Inetec Institute for Nuclear Technology. Uh, according to some other schedule, Applied Inspection uh, had to leave the project in an early stage, so there was four of us partners continuing to work on the subject until today and there is maybe half of a year until the project will, will end. This is our great project team from four different countries and uh, we took this nice photo in Kaunas at a six month project meeting. This is not the whole team, some people are working somewhere else now and some other joined but this was a very nice picture we took when we first met as a big group. And uh, it was very positive atmosphere which continued until today. So short technical introduction. Creep is actually a sort of a damage that happens in, uh, in power plants, in pipes that are working under high temperatures and high mechanical pressures. So typical temperatures in such plants are above 540, 50 degrees. And uh, with the mechanical pressure and such high temperatures, the materials, the steel, is actually suffering some deformations that have different phases. And uh, if you keep it long enough, under such pressure and such temperature, the, uh, the pipes can actually crack and cause very large financial problems, security problems, safety problems. So the idea of this project is actually to try to detect such a negative process in pipes on time <coughs> so we can make uh, uh, we can we can do actions to to prevent the cracks or to slow them down or just to 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 follow them how they develop. So this system that we we actually developed 
is uh, focused on, on detecting creep in a very early stage. And it seems that this deformation is quite um, present in the pipes and uh, the materials that were so that were so highly kept in a high esteem actually have creep in much earlier stage than um, than in much earlier time than it was uh, predicted for the lifetime span uh, at the time these materials were actually made the project is divided in several work packages. Uh, it is a typical procedure for a European project. So here you can see uh, the work packages lift list, the effort that is allocated, and a, and a timeline within the project. So the important things were to uh, optimize the system from previous project creep test that had technology readiness level around six. We had to optimize the mechanical scanner. We had to refine the instrumentation and software in this system. After, after these steps, technical steps, we had to do some field testing and uh, we need to obtain some certificates for this project and then marketing uh, is a quite important part of this project and this event is part of this marketing work package. The technical solution of the concept is uh, shown here. It is a portable system uh, that, is, that uses a high frequency ultrasound probe controlled, brought to the place that we want by a mechanical uh, scanner, controlled by manipulator control electronics and having acquisition software and analysis of ultrasound data, which, and everything is controlled with one PC. Uh, this frequency probe is applied to the heat affected zone around the weld in the pipe that we want to test. It's a steel pipe under test, and the materials are P91 and X20, this is the type of steels. The whole system is portable, it has a it has a large battery and it has a sort of BMS battery management system to keep, to keep the system running. So this is a short technical solution uh, schematically. So uh, quickly about the creep again, we can make different models theoretical models, we have experimental stuff. What is going on is that this, uh, this damage is happening because of the different distribution of stress and temperature within the weld and around the weld. And it has several phases. First, very small defects, then these de defects connect to larger defects. And then at the end, the pipe can crack. And these uh, types, uh, di different types of, uh, different stages of the creep have different time, uh, they, they have different time scales. So the first phases are actually quite slow and the last phase is really abrupt. So this is not, this is why it's not so useful to detect the creep in the final phase because after that there is not much time left. It reminds me of some diseases that people can have. So early detection is very important, but it's also very difficult because when you are testing something with your methods, the smaller it gets, it is more difficult to see. So this is how cracks look on uh, micrographs. This is where they happen. The ones, schematically the ones that we want to test. It is this type four that happens in the heat affected zone. And this is the location where it can happen. It's the Aegeus Dimitrios plant in, in Greece. So it's real, it exists. 
it's here, it looks like this, and it's happening there. So to see these cracks, very small, we need, uh, we, we decided to use ultrasound, and uh, ultrasound is a method in which it is very useful, it's non-destructive, you can use it on people so it's not harmful. And uh, the possibility of detection something, the resolution is actually related to the size of what you want to see and to the frequency or the wavelength of the wave that you want to use to see this. So classical ones that you use in Medical applications are around 2 to 5 to 7 megahertz, 10 megahertz mostly. But then you are looking for larger organs uh, and stuff. But when you want to see something that is really small, like the early stage of the creep, you try to look at very small things, micrometer size. So you need a wavelength that is really small. And me that means that you have to make a system that has a very high ultrasound frequency. Uh, the good thing about the silver lining about the creep damage is that uh, these small cracks that happen actually develop in, uh, although they are micrometer size, they developed in groups. So what we are trying to do is actually to see the reaction of ultrasound, uh, the reaction of ultrasound on groups. It's a video here. Can I? So we are sending the signal, and the signal is reflecting from the groups of small defects, and then we can read what is going on with the signal later. So this is the concept: how to send the ultrasound signal and how to test the group, how to see the defects, and then after that you have to analyze them. This is a simulation that one of our team team members from Inetech did for his uh, master thesis. To apply the ultrasound on a pipe in such a plant that you see before, you need some system that comprises of this ultrasound transducer that actually creates and reads the ultrasound signals from the pipe. And you need, from the concept you saw, a mechanical scanner, you, can, you need a battery, you need electronics that control all this. And you need all this to have as uh, dust proof, waterproof, and which bring us to this IP level of 67 in the casing that we decided to use. We need to have user friendly uh, software. And uh, actually, this is all that we have here. Uh, it's been made. This is what uh, manipulator, high precision manipulator looks like in action actually. It is uh, attached with magnetic curved holders. There is a low friction curved adapter with a water supply. There are easy handling, handling handles and a spring loaded probe holder. And there in this plastic transparent part, you can see 25 megahertz probe here, which is uh, connected with the coaxial cable to the pulsar receiver unit there. This is the pipe that is tested, and this is the part that is going to be tested close to the weld, which has been prepared before, because this has to be polished in order that a high frequency ultrasound can go through, through the pipe. So with all this that we made, with the concept sold, with everything improved, with the software made, with everything tested in the lab, we also did experiments in the power plant recently in Agios Dimitrios, near Kozani in Greece, in Western Macedonia. So these are some photos from there, just to show that the conditions for testing are typical conditions in a power plant that uses lignite, there is a lot of dust. There are, the position is quite, uh, sometimes it can get quite difficult. So people wore masks. Uh, and here you can see 
is somebody taking a photo from here, so they had to climb here. This is not the most difficult position that uh, was tested. There are much more difficult positions. So all this needs to be portable. You cannot plug it somewhere in the electricity. Uh, you need a, a endlessly long cables. If you want to do this, you need a water supply or a gel, and then you test here. So uh, the system really needs to be ruggedized uh, with a high IP and uh, uh, it needs to work well under, let's say, not, not laboratory conditions. Uh, the thing is, this is all very, very big and dirty and, uh, and a rough surface and everything and you are using 25 megahertz ultrasound which is actually completely different in the concept in everything. You use 25 megahertz ultrasound in, in ophthalmology and dermatology, which is really high precision. And this, so we are joining two words that are not so joinable, I would say, and uh, we are happy that we succeeded to do this. Here are just some short videos of action. Maybe I should turn the sound off. This is from the lab, and this is from the plant. Just to see, see how it works. Uh, no, this is the laboratory conditions, this is the plant, so it more or less it looks the same. The, the pipe that we test and the weld has to be really nicely polished. There is a coupling supply, and then the only difference you can see is that this looks much cleaner than this. It's quite dirty. And here nobody was actually keen to talk in the microphone. <laughs> so what can we see with this ultrasound is uh, after we made acquisition of all these things, there is an algorithm and software that analyzes the ultrasound data. We can we see here is things called A scan and B scan, and from the noise level and everything, this will be explained later by uh, Professor Raishutis. We can actually see the after post processing uh, regions that are affected by creep damage, and uh, we can estimate the state roughly semi-quantitatively of the heat affected zone that we tested. So we made tests, we made a system, there is a software, there is post-processing and this post-processing can give you reliable results, what is going on with the heat affected zone in, in your pipe regarding the creep damage. So it's good. Here you can see the milestones of the project and what still needs to be done. So uh, it's just it's shifted because I don't know of this computer. So we have a mechanical system. Uh, we qualified all the suppliers that we needed for the parts. We we verified the performance. Uh, we are about to finish service and operation manual. So the idea is to uh, have a strong dissemination campaign at the end of the project. So this event is one of the things including this. And we will try to have some uh, agreements for commercial use. And uh, I can just show you for the end that dissemination is in the process. Uh, we went to several conferences. There was one in Greece, there was one in Slovenia two actually in Slovenia, and we did some dim local dissemination in Zagreb. Other partners are doing as well this dissemination. There is a website. There is also a part on at Inetech uh, website concerning this project. And these are the photos from uh, Athens conference that happened maybe one month ago. This is just to conclude the picture, so we solved the concept, we up upgraded everything, we did tests, we checked the results that we got, we compared them to the previous measurements, 
and we are quite confident that everything works well and now we are doing dissemination and we are hoping that uh, this will get more and more recognized uh, with the partners outside the consortium. Okay, so this is a short uh, introduction, so thanks for your attention.